Okay, Daniel, if you want to add five fifths plus one fifth, what should you do first? The first thing you should do to add four fifths plus one fifth is draw three. Okay, so three pizzas with five slices each. Oh, goodness, huh? Yeah, that's hard. We can pretend. It's kind of like a person. <laughs> Um, can you tell me, Daniel, why did you say that I need to draw three? There's no three anywhere here. How do I know that three is how many I need to? Because um, you're going to add two numbers, and you have to show what the sum is. Very good. So I'm going to be adding two add-ins together. One's a four-fifths, one's a one-fifth, and one's going to be my sum. All right, what do you do next? Frank. So we have the model. How am I going to represent it now? By shading in how much pieces there are. How many pieces? So he's saying I'm going to shade in how many pieces are next. How many pieces am I going to shade on this one? Four. One, two, three, four. And how many pieces am I going to shade in this one? What should I put in here? Plus. Plus. Okay. And then this one? Equal. And what am I going to do there? Shade, shade the whole thing because I have these four plus this one that'll go there and then this will look shaded completely. Okay. So what is the sum class? Uh, Let's go with the fraction first. Five fifths, which equals one whole, which equals one. Okay. How do you know that this sum is correct? Who can say in their own words? How do we know that this sum is correct? Yeah, I think. Um, Okay, he checked by um, doing the subtraction, the 5 fifths minus 4 fifths, to see if that equaled the two add-ins. One minus one add-in, see if the other add-in ended up being the answer. So he's using, the, using subtraction to check your addition. So that's one way to check. How else would you know? That's really good. I wasn't even thinking that, that way. So how else would you know? How about just the visual? Does the visual, looking at that, don't, do you say, well, I can tell because if I took this piece off and I put it in here, it equals a whole, right? So you can tell just by the visual of the model, you know that your answer is correct. All right, we are going to be doing um, 7-5 today. All right, Julie is making a poster for a book report. You guys don't know what that's like. Um, the directions say to use one-fifth of the poster to describe the setting. Two-fifths of the poster to describe the characters and the rest of the poster to describe the plot. What poster? What part of the poster will she use to describe the plot? So one method is to draw a model. They did an actual model right here to show you what that would look like. She took the poster, divided into fifths. Here's your fifths. Okay, we have the one-fifth that said, right, for setting. Two-fifths for characters, and then, so we're going to shade one to represent the setting, two to represent the characters, and how much is left? Two. How many parts are left, class? Two. two. And the fraction would be represented as? We can tell that there's two parts left, and we know that that's going to look like two-fifths. Let's look at it with a bar model like... Um, Ethan had showed us earlier a bar model doing the same exact, well, a very similar problem. We were using fifths. So we would shade how much for the setting? Two. Three. Look at the question, the question again. How many are we going to shade? We're going to shade one for the setting. And how many for the characters? Two. Two. It says, write an equation for the part of the poster that is used for the setting and the characters. What fraction is right here? Shown right here. No, right here on the orange. One-fifth. And then the characters is? Two-fifths. Two-fifths, which equals? Three-fifths. So the total for the setting and the characters is? 
The next question says, what does the part of the model that is not shaded? I have this part that is not shaded. What part does it represent? Raise your quiet, raise a quiet hand when you know. What part of the poster does it represent? If you're not sure, you can look back at the, the problem. Emil. That's how much it represents, but what part of the poster does it represent? It's going to represent what, Owen? The plot. The plot. So we're going to just put here. It represents the plot. The next one says, write an equation for the part of the poster she will use for the plot. I know that the whole poster equals five-fifths. I can see it right here. One, two, three, four, five. Or I know I'm working with fifths, so I can change my whole number into five-fifths to keep it easy and continue working with five-fifths. I know that three-fifths are going to be used for the setting and the characters, so I'm going to subtract three-fifths. And then I'm going to end up with what, class? Two-fifths. All right, so I end up with two-fifths. Is that the only way to solve this problem? No. I want you to take a minute and see if you can come up with a different equation to represent how much is left. Go ahead and do that. I know that the whole poster has to equal five-fifths, correct? Okay. I know that I have one-fifth already, and I have two-fifths already, and then I have the part that I don't know. So one-fifth, which is this part, and two-fifths, which is this part, some plus something is going to equal five-fifths. So if you can visualize that in your head, if this is the way your mind thinks, you can think, well, that's one plus two equals three, and I need to get to five. So one, two, three, how many more do I need? two more to get to five. Okay? So this is another way to do that problem. And yes, that is algebra. We do it that way. We've been doing stuff like that since first grade. So, um, so Julie will use two-fifths of the poster to describe the plot. I want you to look at what Luke has done. He says that one-fifth plus two-fifth equals three-tenths. I see some of you still making this mistake. What is his mistake? Describe it. Antonio, go ahead and share what you put. I put, Luke says one-fifth plus two-fifth equals three-tenths. The error is one-fifth plus two-fifth equals three-tenths because the five is supposed to stay the same. Okay, so the mistake that he made, I like your full description, by the way. Um, you, The five has to remain the same because that's the size of the parts. We don't add the denominator when we're adding that's, fractions. That's like and that's um, that's exactly what the mistake that he made was. Common denominators. Fractions with common denominators represent holes divided into the same equal size parts. That's what we keep talking about. Equal size parts, that's the denominator. To add or subtract fractions with the same denominator, you can add or subtract the number of parts given in the numerator. So again, we're looking at the numerator, and that's the number of parts, and then we just add them. When we talk about the size of the part, if you're adding a fraction and I ask you what's the size of the part, you're going to look at the denominator and give the unit fraction for it, in a sense. So if I said, here's a fraction that says 1, one fourth plus 2 fourth, and I ask you what size parts are we working with, who knows what your answer would be? What size are our parts? Not not just simply four. Do you, did you finish? Did you change the word that you said? What did you say? Fourths. Fourths. Right. The size of them are of these are fourths. So we would call them fourth size parts. In the case here, it shows you one fourth size part plus two fourth size parts, and it just looks like that. One fourth plus two fourths equals how many fourth size parts, class? Three. Three. One of them plus two of them equals three of them. <laughs> and we're talking about our ums, our fourth size parts. Now let's look at the next one. If we have three six 
size parts and two sixth size parts. How many parts do we have? Total? Three plus two equals? Five. five. And what do we have? Five Six. sixth size size parts. So what does that look like over here when we've written the fractions? Three six plus two six equals five, five six. six. Alright, now we're going to be doing tenth size parts. Seven tenth size parts minus, oh we changed to subtract, so make sure you're paying attention. Four tenth size parts Equal. So first we're just going to say 7 minus 4 is what? 3. Everybody. 3. Everybody. 7 minus 4. 3. There you are. I knew you had a voice. 3 and what do we have? What 3 what? 3 tenths. Parts. Tenth size parts. All right. What would that look like in a fraction? Who can tell me what this first fraction will look like? I should see more hands. What would this first fraction look like? Ronnie. Seven, ten. Okay, Benny, what would the second one look like? Four tenths. Four tenths. And Horace, what would the third one look like? Three tenths. Three tenths. Seven tenths minus four tenths equals three tenths. Okay. Here's a, a question for you. You can catch up on writing them in a minute. Sense or nonsense? Brian says that when you add or subtract fractions with the same denominator, you can add or subtract the numerators and keep the denominators the same, or keep the same denominator. Is he correct? And explain why, yes or no. He is correct or he is not correct. Explain. The question is, is Brian correct? And explain. Yes, Brian is correct. I'm, doing a I'm modeling a complete answer to you guys. Okay, now I need to explain. When adding fractions, you are adding the number, oops, the number of parts of a certain size. Okay. The size is represented by the numerator uh, the denominator. So what happens is the denominator then becomes not a number anymore. It's a size. Is a size a number? Or if we're talking about small, medium, and large, they wouldn't be a number, right? Mm -hmm. There's, would you add small and small? Yes. And get medium? No. No. They become the size of a part. So they're no longer considered a number. They're a number. Don't get me wrong. They're still a number. But they're a size of a part. Can you add sizes? No. Like if I'm going to buy a size of pants and I'm going to say I'm going to buy a size 2 of this pant and I'm going to buy a size 2 of this pant. Did I just buy a size 4 pant? No. No, no I bought two size 2 pants. Correct? So you when the when a number is representing a size, you can't then think of those as a number. You have to think of them as a size. And in this and when you're adding the denominator represents a size, not a number anymore. It's the size of the part. It's, in this case, size of the, of the whole. It's, a, it's a piece, well, it's the size of the part. So the numerator is representing how many? That's the number that you can work with. The denominator is representing the size. So again, when you're thinking about the denominator, try to think about them as a size like small or medium or large. Or if you wear a size, you know, 10 clothing, think of it as a size 10. If you bought two of the same thing, would you be buying a size 20? No. No, you would be buying two of size 10. 
Okay, so you, if you can kind of think of fractions as your like you would be buying your clothing. Think of it that way. When you're confused about the denominator, remember back, it's the size. It's representing a size. Even though it's a number, it's representing a size. It's not representing how many. Those are the differences. Okay, so I finished this. The size is represented by the denominator, so you can't add them. And that's why it doesn't work. You don't have to copy this. I just wanted you to understand that it's not simply because it's the rule or that's how you do it or you only add the numerators because a lot of you were using those explanations, which are all true, but you need to understand why. And it's that it represents a size and therefore you can no longer treat it as a regular number.